Right, so that's how I remember midpoint. It's in the middle, so in the middle is the average. Finding the average of two things, you add them together, you divide by two. So you add your x coordinates together, you divide by two. That's the x coordinate of the midpoint. Add your y values together, you divide by two. That's the y value of the midpoint. Okay? So let's just start with a couple of examples. Let's find the midpoint of the line segment with the given endpoint. So let's say that our endpoints are negative 10, negative 1, and positive 4, negative 7. So it really truly is as easy as adding together negative 10 and 4 and dividing by 2, adding together negative 1 and negative 7 and dividing by 2. Now hopefully you can do this by hand. Um, you don't have to rely upon your calculator. Negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. Divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 1 plus negative 7 is negative 8. Divided by 2 is negative 4. That is the midpoint. Now, if you did want to type that into your calculator, if you do it all at one time, you must put parentheses around negative 10 plus 4 before you divide by 2. Because if you don't, your calculator looks for multiplication and division before addition and subtraction. So if you don't have parentheses, it's going to be 4 divided by 2 and add that to negative 10 instead of adding first and then dividing. Okay? Now, that's a pretty easy scenario. How about we look at this scenario uh, that goes like this. If you're given the midpoint and one of your endpoints, find the other endpoint. Okay? If you're given the midpoint and one of your endpoints, find the other endpoint. So let's say one of our endpoints is 9, 4, and the midpoint is negative 5, 2. Well, we don't know the other endpoint, so it's like the unknown point x, y. We don't know what it is, but we know that it has an x and a y. So when we add our x values together and divide by 2, in this case that would be 9 plus x and divide by 2, that's equal to the x coordinate of our midpoint, negative 5. When we add the x values together, divide by 2, it gives us the x value of the midpoint. Uh, let's go ahead and work that out. So for solving this, we need to start by multiplying both sides by 2. So we've got 9 plus x is equal to negative 10 and then very simple just subtract the 9 so our x coordinate is negative 19 let's do the same thing find our y 4 plus y divided by 2 is equal to the y coordinate of our midpoint so we multiply both sides by 2 4 plus y is equal to 4 subtract 4 so we get 0 for our y coordinate. So our endpoint, our other endpoint here is negative 19, 0. Now we could check this really quickly. Now that we have the two endpoints, if we add them together divide by 2, we should get the midpoint. Negative 19 plus 9 is negative 10. Divided by 2, negative 5. That checks out. 0 plus 4 is 4. Divided by 2 is 2. That checks out. So that is our endpoint. Okay? All right, so here's what I need. Let's find the distance between these two points. Now, just so that I'm in the habit of labeling things, I'm going to label these, not that it necessarily impacts how I do the problem, but it's just a good idea to be in that habit. Okay, so x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Now, my suggestion, not my suggestion, my requirement is that you type in everything that's under the square root, not including the square root, because we're going to need to simplify these radicals. Okay, so I type everything in except for the square root, parentheses and all, so I get the square root of 52. Now, let's see simplifying square roots real quick. We want to figure out what perfect square divides evenly into 52. Well, 4 is the biggest perfect square that divides evenly into 52. 52 is 4 times 13. So the square root of 4 is 2. We cannot, the 13 is not a perfect square. 
no need to say that we can't take the square root. We can take the square root of it. It's not a perfect square, and it's not divisible by another perfect square. So that is simplified. Now, for the sake of checking ourselves and for also giving ourselves an idea of what that distance is, go ahead and, and check the decimal values. The square root of 52 and also compare 2 times the square root of 13, and you'll see that both of those give you the exact same decimal value. So the distance is approximately 7.211 units. It is exactly 2 square roots of 13 units. Okay, so there's a practice problem for you, just using the distance formula. And let me point out a few things about this standard form equation in the circle. Number one, this is what everybody tends to forget. This is r squared. So if you're identifying the length of the radius, you got to take the square root of that number on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, so r squared is in the equation, but r by itself is the length of the uh, radius. These two signs are minus signs. So that means when you're identifying the center, you're going to change the sign. Okay, so if it's x plus 2 squared, the center, the x coordinate of the center would be negative 2. If it were y minus 5 squared, the y coordinate would be positive 5. Okay, so change the signs when you're identifying the center. Um, and there doesn't always have to be anything with the x and the y. The first example we're going to look at is just x squared plus y squared is equal to 36. So that means that our center is the origin. The center is 0, 0. When there's nothing added and subtracted from x or y, then you are at the origin. Okay, so I start by plotting my center point at the origin in this case. Uh, also, one more thing. Sometimes like x will have something added or subtracted and y may not. Okay, so that means that the y coordinate would be zero. The x coordinate would be something different than zero, but the y coordinate would be zero or vice versa. Okay, they can both have something added or subtracted. One of them can have something added or subtracted or neither of them can have something added or subtracted. Okay, so what would be our radius here? 6. Okay, it's equal to 36, so the square root of 36 is 6. So the radius is 6. Now, the easiest way, I think, to graph a circle is you start with your center, you go up that many units, you go down that many units, you go right that many units, and you go left that many units. Uh, and those are going to be the extreme edges of your circle. And then you just do your best to connect those in a circular fashion. Mine never look very much like a circle, but it's about as close as I'm going to get. Some of you are way more artistic than I am. I'm very envious of that, but it is what it is. I do the numbers, not the art. So, that's the circle. x squared plus y squared equals 36, that's the circle. Now, while y'all are finishing up, let me talk about the exact definition of a circle. Okay? If we were to measure the distance from the center to some random point out here, you know, on my circle, it looks like it's 4, 4. It looks like a point on the circle. I don't think 4, 4 is actually on, or I know 4, 4 is not on the circle. Because if I put 4 in for x and 4 in for y, I'm going to get 32 when I square it and have to get a few. But anyways, that's just because I can't draw a perfect circle here. But the definition of a circle is it's all points that are equidistant from a center point. So all these points here, if I found the distance between that point and the center, every single time the distance could be six. Every single time the distance between this point out here and the point on the center, on uh, the center point, the distance should be six. That's the definition of circle. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's look at one. Let's look at number eight. It's not at the origin. X minus one squared plus y plus three squared is equal to four. So our center is at positive one 
negative 3. So I go to positive 1, negative 3. They're in the fourth quadrant. Plot that. My radius is 2. So I have a much smaller circle this time. So from my center, I'm going to go up, down, left, and right, two units. And then I'm going to try and make it look like a circle. And that's it. Okay, so let's practice. Okay, so we're given various information here. We want to write the standard form equation of the circle. So the first one we're looking at, number nine is the center is 8, 8, and it has a radius of 7. Well, that's super easy. Literally, all we're doing is plugging in the H and the K. So that's X minus 8 squared plus Y minus 8 squared is equal to 49. You've got to square the radius when you put it into the equation. Okay, so those are easy. Now, what if we're told the center and the point on the circle? What did we say that we could do distance formula? The distance formula will allow us to find, I'm going to say D equals R, okay, because the distance from the center to a point on the circle is the radius. <coughs> so we've got 13 minus 7 squared plus 12 minus 12 squared. So this one looks easy. They're on the same line. That radius is 6, okay? So the radius is 6, so when we plug it into the equation, uh, we've got x minus, make sure that you use this, the center point and not the point on the circle. x minus 13 squared plus y minus 12 squared is equal to 36. Okay, because we square the radius. I'm going to plug it into our equation. Okay, last one I want to show you is number 21. We're told the center and we're told the circumference. So anytime we're writing the equation of a line, we need the center, hk, and we need the radius. Well, can the circumference give us the radius? Yeah. Circumference is what in terms of radius? 2 pi r is circumference in terms of the radius. So 2 pi r is equal to 4 pi. So that means 2r is equal to 4. Our radius is 2. So our equation here would be x minus 13 squared plus y plus 1 squared is equal to 2 squared, which is 4. Okay? So not really that complicated, just you got to pick.